Crafty friends, this is Tanisha with She Crafts 2. And first, I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for stopping by and visiting. I hope that we will be crafty friends going forward. Today, I am here to do a video, a tutorial on how I go about making my cotton candy charm or dangle. Um, I've had a few people ask about how to make it, and so I decided to make my very first video about uh, making this crafty, making this crafty embellishment. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, there's not a lot of pieces that go to it. Um, if you know how to make pom poms, then you're gonna, you're gonna go through this. It's gonna be a breeze for you. So this is what we're gonna be making today. It has a piece here at the top for it to be a dangle. But this is, sorry guys, I am still getting used to uh, this whole process with um, working with this camera. I am sorry. I am probably going to stutter and stumble through this process. But I do ask you guys to be patient with me as I figure this out. Um, but this is what we're going to make today. And I'm going to jump right into it because I don't know how long it's going to take me to explain this. Hopefully I can get through it pretty quickly. But this is what we're going to make today. Okay, so I'm going to leave this laying here. And I'm just going to pop a couple items in. So this is... The yarn, let's scoop this over. We'll leave it in the frame. And so we have this ball of yarn I've used in some other projects. That's the pink one. We have the yellow yarn. Uh, yellow yarn taken over. It's a big, big skein of it. And then we have the mint green that is at the bottom. Um, we have a couple pieces that I'm going to show you guys, and these pieces will be what you'll use if you're going to turn your cotton candy piece into a dangle. If you're going to leave it as just a fun embellishment to give to your friends or create for yourself, then you won't need these next couple items. This is a pen, a flathead pen. Hopefully you guys can kind of see it. It's a flathead pen. Uh, we also have a lobster clasp that we use, and I use two different jump rings. You don't have to. Um, I use two just because I like to see it move a lot, so um, I use two of them to create a lot more movement. You will also need a piece of felt. Um, I usually just cut from this little piece. It's a little, as you can see, a little bit chewed up. Um, but I just cut a little piece like this, just a really small little dot that you'll use. And this will be um, used to anchor your uh, flathead pen. And that will come later on down the tutorial. I also have this piece of ribbon, which is what I use to create this uh, bow here. Um, this little bow embellishment, well not embellishment, but this little bow piece here. Um, and this is probably about two and a half inches, maybe a little bit more than two and a half inches. And it, you can use that, that can be based upon how big or small you want your ribbon or your bow to be. And then I also have this little gem here that I put in the center of the bow, just to add a little bit more fun to the uh, embellishment. So we're going to jump right into it because we're already three minutes into this. So I am going to move pretty quickly. I guys, I do not use any of the fun um, pieces that or not pieces, but any of the fun tools that they've created for us to make pom poms. I literally just use my my two fingers and I'm having butter fingers today um, but here we go and I just wrap this around my finger uh, and this right here what I will suggest when you're wrapping it is make sure that your fingers if you're gonna do it this way you can most definitely do it making your own pom-poms however you make your pom-poms but if you're gonna use this way just make sure you kind of leave a little bit of wiggle room for your fingers to kind of fit through your two fingers um, so that you can pull the piece through to um, secure your pom-pom okay and you'll also need a glue gun too i didn't show you guys the glue gun but you'll need a glue gun as well and i usually wrap this probably about at least 40 times guys i wrap it around my finger about 40 times and understand that the more you wrap it the more puffy that uh your pom-pom is going to be um, and this is where, as you can see, it's wrapped around my two fingers. This is where I take this little piece of the yarn from, and I snip that one. 
I snipped it off. Sorry guys, this is my first video. Again, please be patient with me. Um, so I snipped a little piece off and this is how I do this. So it's wrapped around this. Um, go ahead and get that little piece in there. It's wrapped around that. And we're just gonna tie it off. Gonna tie it off here, okay? Um, and it's okay. Some it's okay if it's a little bit wonky because we're gonna go back through and we are most definitely going to do some trimming to this. So it's definitely okay if we uh, if it's not perfect, okay? So we're just gonna tie that in a little knot like that. And we'll have these two little pieces hanging. It's no problem because as I say, we're gonna do some trimming to it and we will get all of the pieces together. Now at this point, I like to go in and chop. Not chop guys, but you know, chop. <laughs> um, I like to go in and cut it right here. Um, I'll cut that little piece in half just right then. And we're gonna go in and cut this piece and cut this these little loops here. We're gonna cut them. We're gonna cut them in half so that we don't have loops. Everything will be free and free to be puffy. Um, and this is what we'll have here. And you guys get to see real time, honestly, some of the things that happen. Right now, what I'm doing, because I didn't make it tight enough, the tighter that you make this is what's going to make your um, your pom-pom flare out, okay? So as you can see, I'm pulling this tighter. You see it kind of come together as a ball. So um, you kind of want to make it tighter than what I did around my finger. I just came from, um, came from outside um, taking some... Uh, packaging to the garbage so my fingers are a little bit cold i'm here in the midwest guys so um, it's still a little chilly here we're having a pretty chilly day today but as you can see this is our little pom-pom rough looking but it's okay because it's gonna come together like that soon so that's our first pom-pom and that's the top pom-pom uh, now we're going to make our bottom pom-pom. It doesn't matter what order you go in. I'm just, and again, this one, I wrap. Sorry, guys, I'm out of frame. We're going to wrap this one again. And yes, I do have the, um, the little pom-pom tools from We Are Memory Keepers. But I just find that it's easier and quicker for me to make my pom-poms this way, okay? But you are free to make your pom-poms in whatever way is easier for you, okay? Um, and this is about, I didn't count how many times I wrapped this around my fingers. This is me again pushing this piece through. I'm going to snip. I'm snipping from my ball of yarn there. And we're gonna pull it tight. I'll make sure I pull it tight this time. Um, sometimes I'll go back around and that's probably what I didn't do with the first pom-pom. I'll go back through and push it through to wrap it one more time. Ah. Let's, see. Let's get it through there, okay? So we are going to wrap that pull it pretty tight see my fingers they're kind of turning blue on the tip but I pull it pretty tight so that way we can make sure that we have a nice uh, round and formed pom-pom uh, okay and then we're just gonna lay it down flat and tie it into a knot here okay see that tie it again just to secure it and again we're gonna go through I kind of pull it down push it over and it's okay if you don't get all of the loops on this one cut because when you're going through and trimming it most likely you're going to get the ones that you missed um so i usually just kind of go from the side and start chopping or cutting um yeah see there and you twist it around and you kind of see where you skip some now this one this is the bottom one and i like to go ahead and do this while i'm working on my other pom-poms 
so that it has time to kind of set. So what I'm doing here, what you kind of see me doing is searching for the center of this pom-pom, okay? And the center is going to be like these. This is where we tied at. So off to the side where we tied at, and this is the center of it. Can you see that, that little hole, that little space? Um, and what I'm going to do is this is my paper straw. This is this part here, as you can see. This is the paper straw. I leave it long, guys. You can cut it off if you know for sure, but because I don't have exact measurements for this, I just do it based upon what I like and how I want it to be. So I literally, you just saw me, so you can see that, sorry, it is pushed in through that space, okay? See it going up there, okay? So that's what I do with this, and this is the bottom piece, okay? And I normally put hot glue, y'all, and of course, guess what I did not do? I did not heat up the hot glue gun. So, yeah. Normally, I told you guys, it's my first time, so <laughs> be patient with me, please. Um, so we're gonna let that heat up. It normally doesn't take that long to heat up. Um, but I would normally put the glue just around this edge here and then push this up so that it can start setting and getting cold there. But we're just going to set this to the side for right now and we'll move on to the yellow piece right now while, while the hot glue gun is heating up. Um, so here we go with the yellow one as well. And again, guys, I will probably do some time stamp time stamps for you if you've made it up to this point. Um, you'll see some time stamps in the description box so that if you already know how to make your pom-poms, you won't need to go through doing this. You definitely will not need to go through doing this. Um, so I have to kind of figure out how to do the time stamps because it's not completely in order. Uh so that you can see and I'll probably end up just taking that piece out so that way for my people who actually are going to follow the timestamps they won't miss anything okay but anyway so here we go I'm actually going to snip this now because yellow is big and jumbo and I don't want to knock all kind of stuff all kind of things off the desk trying to pull yellow under there so this is me making this tighter and you can see that I am really hoping guys that you can that I'm that you can see this pretty good at this point um we're gonna do we've done three of them so far so hopefully you guys have really kind of been able to see the process to the pom-poms and if not if I skipped anything or moved too quickly through anything guys please feel free to ask questions um, I definitely have no problem with answering questions okay and with this yellow one it just kind of depends on how much of it I want to show how much yellow because all of them may not be exactly the same one of the joys of making handcrafted items uh, it just kind of depends um, on how I want it to on what color I want you to see the most um, you may not see this one be as fluffy as the other two so you can kind of see this pink one is kind of a little bit more puffy and fluffy than the yellow one and then we have our little green one, which is the bottom one. Usually the pink one is the most fluffy. So, um, yeah. Sorry, guys. You may be able to hear my daughter in the background. I did ask her to kind of keep it down because I was going to record. But you know how kids are. Okay, so here we go. We're in business. It is heated up now. And so we're gonna put this. We're gonna put this on the edge. Can you see, guys? Just putting it on the edge there. And we are going to just slide it on down into there. Slide it on down into it. 
and it's gonna hold it and we just kind of let it sit let it sit and be let it cool off so that it's not moving it's not sliding um, you don't have any movement with that and then I'm just gonna snip those two cords I snipped the long cords off of the yellow piece and we are going to let we're gonna put glue there put a little bit of hot glue on there you guys see what I'm doing a little bit of hot glue and we're gonna stick that see that hot glue sitting right there in the center now the thing is guys because sometimes I do get a little excited with this hot glue and I'll have glue running all outside of this thing and the thing is you want to kind of try and keep it as much in the center as possible because once that glue hardens and it come, runs out to the end, you're going to lose some of the softness and some of the fluffiness of your pom-pom if you get a little heavy-handed with the glue. Trust me, I have learned from the past, okay? So this is our bottom piece. This is our center piece. We're going to sit that down because we have a couple more things that we need to do to this pink one, okay? So just like we found the center of the, the mint green one, we're going to look for, and you can see the line here where I tied it at there. See that line across there? That's where I tied it at. I don't want to go through that area. I want to find the center of this bow, okay? Not bow, I'm sorry. Pom-pom. I want to find the center of it. And see that we're right in the center of it. I am now going to take, if you want to make this into a dangle, this is where we start to create our dangle, okay? And you do not have to do this. This is just, I'm showing you guys exactly what I did to create the, the pom-pom that you guys have uh, seen in some of my projects, uh, not shares, but some of my um uh, cotton candy pom-poms that I shared with some crafty friends. Um, and you see, you see the, the flat head pin is right there in the center, right? It's right there in the center. You're not going to pull it all the way through. You're just going to pull it right up to where that hole is. Okay. And then I put some hot glue right in the center, right in that center part. Okay. Make sure it's good in there. Make sure you get some hot glue on that pin. See that right there? And we are going to take our little piece. This little piece that I told you guys about, we're going to take that little piece and we're going to stick it right in the center where that hot glue is, right where your flathead pin is. We're going to stick it right there. And we are going to, let's mute that. Sorry, guys have a few commercials playing, which I have some comfort, like some comforting and soothing music playing in the background. I hope it's not too loud and distracting. Um, and as you can see right here, I got a little extra glue right there. That is okay if you think that is going to interrupt the flow of your cotton candy and create some hardness where people might squeeze it at, then you definitely can cut it off, okay? But we're going to sit this to the side now so that it can get soft. But as you can see, this is your flathead pin sticking up out of the top and... I know some of the ladies have been doing wire wrapping, so you could do the wire wrapping here, or you could do the hook, the, the circle hook, uh, which is what I th typically do. So you can, we're going to leave that sitting right there so that it can harden. Um, and I am going to go into making the little bow, okay? So I have this little uh, two and a half inch, it's a little bit over two and a half, but um, doesn't have to be an exact measure, okay? And I normally take a piece of uh, embroidery floss and uh, we're gonna lay that, just kind of sit it to the side. We're gonna wrap this, we'll fold it over, I should say, not wrap, but we're gonna fold it over and then we're gonna fold this piece on top of this now what i like to do guys and you don't have to do this part it's optional but this is kind of from my ribbon and bow make because it's from my bow making days i just kind of like to seal that off so that i don't have to worry about it fraying or you know any unruly pieces so we've sealed it off so it's no frays are going to happen from this okay and that's just what I like to do you don't have to do that that's just what I like to do and you see I've literally folded it over on itself I pinch it a little bit pinch it together a little bit see that it's kind of pinched and then I'm gonna or pinched <laughs> um, I'm gonna wrap this around 
my honey always makes fun of me because he's like, you're a Midwesterner. How do you sound so country when you talk? How you have such a twang to the way that you talk? And sometimes the, my grandmother being from Mississippi comes out <laughs> when I'm talking. Um, but so we're just wrapping. I just wrap that uh, embroidery floss around that bow in order to secure it in place. And I'm making a knot here. And I know it looks a little crooked laying here, but it's okay. We are going to straighten it out, hopefully. Um, I won't create too many problems. And we can get it straightened out the way that we want it to be. There. There we go. And we just, I just snip these pieces off. Snip this off. Oh, guys, this video is 20 minutes now. Um, yeah, I'm definitely either going to have to talk faster or I am going to have to learn how to edit because I don't want to hold you guys hostage like this. Um, but here is our bow. This is what our little bow looks like. Um, this is the rest of it. So now that we have given this time to set, we are now going to put a little bit of glue right here in the middle of that. And we're going to press this little, see that circle? We're going to press that circle right in the middle of that, okay? Right there in the middle. Push it down, swish it down a little bit. <laughs> and I typically, let me see if I can show you guys this on the side. So as you can see here from this side, um, I know it looks a little wild now, guys, but... Um, you're going to see more of the pink and more of the green and like kind of like just a little bit of speckle of the yellow. So this is where the fun begins. Um, I know I haven't shared a lot about myself with you guys, but um, I was a barber student. So this part is fun for me. For some people, it's going to be kind of tedious, especially, especially for um, people who are kind of perfectionist which sometimes I lean along that line and want to try and make it just so and perfect but literally we are turning it spinning it around and around and cutting on it until it is the shape that we want to see it be and as you can see our the shape of our pom-pom is starting to form right so literally right now I am just going straight up and chopping straight up and chopping uh and spinning it around until I get like all of the wild pieces, okay? And typically I do this over the garbage, but since because of the recording process, you know, I can't do it over the garbage, but we'll just go through. And then um, we're gonna go through and shape it just like that, okay? Uh, and I'm going on the top here, shaping. Okay, shaping, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat is a little dry, um, so you guys think, is it pretty easy, right, it's pretty simple, you got a couple steps that you have to take to get it completely done, but it's pretty easy, right, so, see here we go and sometimes i'll go through and chop a little bit from the bottom there just to kind of groom it a little bit more but this is essentially our pom-pom guys and you can just go through and trim it more trim it how you want it to look whatever looks good for you whatever looks finished for you um but this is how you do it okay so at this point after i'm done cutting it down I'll go ahead and glue my little bow on, glue my little bow on, um, and we'll put it right there, right under the bottom, see, did you guys see me do that, did you guys see, I mean, I guess you probably can figure out where the bow goes, right, 
And then I'll go ahead and put my little gem on there in the center. And this is part of the reason, guys, why I told you that I don't go ahead and cut. I don't cut my peat, my, my uh, straw until towards the end because you never know for sure because you're not making exact size pom-poms. Like, it's not exact. Um... I never know for sure how big or how small my pom-poms are going to be. And sometimes in order to make it balanced, I may have to make the straw a little bit longer than I typically do. Or, you know, may end up being a little bit shorter than it typically is. Um, so, here is our pom-pom. Let me scoot this over a little bit. Here is our pom-pom. And this part here... You will need, um, where, I think I, okay, so I have a pair here too, okay. So for this part here, I usually take this flat piece here, and I just bend it over, I bend it into an L shape, see, it's in the L shape there, and I cut off about what I think is not necessary for me to make my loop or my circle. And if you want to add charms or anything to it or like a bead or something to it or on the top of it, this is before you bend it, it's the time to go ahead and add that little uh that little topping to it. Um, I don't know if you guys remember with my ice cream cones that I did with the carousel collection. Um, it had like a little uh heart shaped cherry on the top and um, it had a little heart shaped cherry on the top and that was how I did it. I just added the little bead on it before I created that loop. Um, but yeah, we are all finished. The only thing I'm doing to this now, only thing that I would need to do to this now is add the jump rings to it and, uh, add the clasp onto the end. But this is our pom pom and it is done and just uh, to say thank you to you guys for coming and stopping by. Hopefully you guys want to be crafty friends and crafty family with each other. Um, and that you'll go ahead and subscribe and that it was a video that you guys found useful. And that you'll be able to create the, uh, the cotton candy embellishments. If you guys do, please make sure that you let me see. I want to see them. So make sure you tag me to them. I'm on Instagram as she crafts too, so make sure you tag me to them. But I also have this one, which is a jumbo one. It is not a dangle. It is um, just one that I thought would be fun to kind of sit on your desk and maybe one of your holders. And you guys, um, I'm actually giving this one away and I'm actually going to give one of these away as well. So if you guys are interested in getting one either one of them, um, you can at the bottom leave a comment that says I want one or I want it or leave me an emoji or something like that letting me know that you're interested in getting one and I will pick a random winner and I will make sure that I get it out to you guys. So thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you guys had fun. Again, I want to see them if you create them and I hope you have fun making them. Until next time, enjoy. Take care guys.